How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Voro Motors. I'm AJ Hart, here today with another guide to maintain your ride. For today's video, what we're going to be doing is a full cruiser motor replacement, which sounds like a big deal, because honestly it is. This is a job that you're only going to need to be doing if you ran into some serious issues with your scooter. Maybe you busted the motor while you were trying to replace the wheel. Maybe you ran into a really bad rock and it just destroyed your motor. Maybe you just ran into normal wear and tear and the motor slowly burnt itself out. Regardless, this is a job that ideally you're not gonna have to do often because it's a bit of a doozy. But don't you worry, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how to do this job correctly. It took me about 30 minutes, so it should take you about the same amount of time. Let's go ahead and jump into it. To start this job off, let's remove the four screws on the top of the fender. Just grab an Allen wrench and loosen all four of these screws. Once the screws are all free, we can lift the fender up and pull it away. I'm going to let it just hang off to the side. To make this job just a teensy bit easier, let's remove the rear brake. To do that, we're going to remove the screws at the top and bottom of the brake unit. Once the screws are off, you can pull the brake up and away. For my own sanity, I'm going to put these screws back into these holes so I don't lose them. And we can let the brake itself just hang here. Now let's get that rear wheel taken off. Just grab a wrench and break this large nut here free and remove it. Now we need to get this locking pin off. I went ahead and used my wrench to wiggle it free so it could be grabbed and taken off. On the other side, we will repeat that process. Take a wrench, break the nut free, and remove it. Now to get the pin off, I advise holding the wheel up on the opposite side to get slack. So it's easier to pry the pin free. Drop the wheel down and remove the pin. As the wheel comes down, you should also see a small washer on each side of the wheel. Go ahead and put those somewhere safe. If you follow the motor cable up, you'll see a zip tie here. Let's cut that. Now let's go to the front because in order to replace the motor, we need to unplug the motor. Take an Allen wrench and remove all four screws here on the front of the U-deck, as we call it. Yeah, that's a new term I learned recently. Then take a smaller Allen wrench and remove these two smaller screws on the sides. Now you should be able to wiggle the U-deck off the front. And now that we can see the controller, let's go ahead and yank that sucker out. Now I hope you have your gloves because we're about to unplug the battery. You should see these thick red and black cables coming off of the controller. 
it will be these ones that run into a cable with a white and green connector. Now for you, they should be matching a black and red pair of cables, but I'm working on an older cruiser, so it's blue on the negative side. Which is strange, but it's why we changed it. Unplug the black cable first, and then the red one. Make sure that once they are unplugged, you cover those ends with that white cover. Now let's move over to the side. We're going to unplug the motor itself now. Let's start with this large white brick. Push the pin on top down and pull the brakes apart. Now we can unplug the blue, yellow, and green cables here. And just like that, the old motor is totally unplugged. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut the old motor here at the base. Then I'm going to yank it through the front of the scooter. Now we've got two motors here. One is our new one with an intact cable, and the other is our old motor with a cut cable. Now we need to take that brake disc and get it onto our new motor. Take your Allen wrench and remove all six of the screws here. Make sure to keep them though, we will need them on the new motor. And let's pop this baby off. Oh, don't forget the, all the screws. Now let's get the new motor here and put the disc on the new motor. Make sure that when you put this on, you can see the arrow for the disc brake and that the arrow points the same way the wheel will spin. Now put all the screws on to secure the disc to the motor. I threaded them in a mostly circular shape, but make sure that when you tighten these screws, you do it in a star-shaped pattern to get a good flat tightening. And now we have a new motor ready for installation. So how do we do that? Go down to this small hole near the rear right light and just feed the cables into this hole one cable at a time. All three of the colored connections and the multicolored fan out. Once all the ends are in, we can go ahead and push the cable through the hole and into the scooter as far as we can. Once we get close to the end of the cable here, you should be able to go to the front of the scooter, reach in, and pull the cables out to the front. Ta-da! Now, let's look at the old motor cable. You remember this large white connector? We need to pull all the pins out and use that connector for our new connection. If we zoom in a bit here, let's talk about how to get the old connections out. These pins are set up like a small Y, with a small prong that sticks out that can spring up and down. In order to get these pins out of the connector, we need to take a pair of tweezers and squeeze the old prong in, moving that prong down so we can pull the pin out. Let's go ahead and do that for all five of these pins, and then I will go over the order to put them all back together. Alright, let's talk about the order to put these new pins into this connector. If you have the connector open to you, and the little plug on the left, then the cable should sit in this order. 
black on the top left, blue on the top right, green in the middle right, yellow on the bottom right, and red on the bottom left. Plugging these pins into the connector is as simple as shoving them into the correct slots. The prongs should pop open when they get through and it should keep the pins secure. I recommend jostling the cable a bit to make sure that they stay in. Now see our yellow pin comes right back out. The prong doesn't stand up enough on the other side to stay secure, so I'm going to use my fingernail and pry that prong out a bit and put it back in. Much better. Looks like red has the same issue. Pry that prong out a bit and then put it in again. Now let's put these connections together and all those colors should match with the opposite side. Now let's plug in the last three motor connections. Just plug in the blue, yellow, and green cables. Make sure you listen for a small click so that you know the cable is secure. Before I can call this a job well done, we need to plug the battery back in. Black to black, or blue in my case, and then red to red. Now let's test that the motor works. Lift the motor by the rod and squeeze the throttle. It spins pretty great. Let's go ahead and put it all back together now. The best trick for the controller is to try to push all the cables as far back and down as possible before shoving the controller back into the space up top. Now let's get that U-deck and place it back over the front. Give it a few love taps to sit against the scooter, then grab those old screws and get all four of these tightened down. Once all four of these screws are tightened down, we should be able to get those two screws on the side back on. Now let's get this rear wheel back together. First, we'll put these little washers back on the wheel. Then lift the motor back up and into those brackets. Grab those little locking pins and put one on each side. Push them in all the way so the little lip hooks into the small hole. Next, grab those nuts from before and get them finger tight on each side. Now we'll grab a wrench and tighten that nut down on both sides to get this all seated securely. Let's go ahead and put the back brake on by removing both of those screws I replaced before. Placing the brake back onto the disc brake and tightening down both of those brake screws. As I tighten this down, I'm going to go ahead and tune the brakes a bit. If you need guidance on how to do that, check out the brake tuning video we already have here on the channel. And finally, to wrap this job up, we're going to put the rear fender back onto the scooter by putting all four of those screws back on the fender. And there you have it. You just replaced the motor for the cruiser, the heart and soul of any scooter. Good job. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns that came up about your cruiser while you were doing this job, by all means, leave that question or concern in the comments down below or reach out to us at support at voramotors.com. If you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see us do, go ahead and drop those into the comments down below as well. We love hearing your ideas and we'd love to know what other jobs you'd like to see us do for these scooters. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps and I hope you enjoy your ride.